Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. That's right, I'm back for another one and you guys are probably wondering, what are you doing in your garage? There's no cars by you. You're not under a car. You're not near a car. You're not even inside of a car. You're probably right on that one. But I figured everybody who has cars, you work in your garage or some small shop you run it out that has no heat. I figured I'd give you guys a little bit of a trick to keep your garage warmer when you're working on your cars or whatever the case may be or whatever you're doing. Because a lot of you guys know I do a lot of woodworking out of my garage. And yeah, it's a mess. <laughs> so anybody who has been following my channel since the beginning knows that I did a lot of woodworking. I started out my channel doing woodworking. Then I graduated into cars because I've always been a car guy. I've always been in the car world. For as long as I can remember, I had a business where I dealt with a lot of performance cars and cars for drifting and things like that. So I figured I'd go back to my roots, start doing stuff with cars again, and that's what really made my channel take off more and more. But like I always say in all my videos, before I really get started, please share, like, and subscribe. It does mean a lot to me, and I am trying to get to that 1,000 mark before the end of December. If it happens, great. If not... And so be it. But what I'm going to teach you guys today is I looked this one up because I've been using this thing right here to keep my garage warm. And it gets a little expensive. Using that propane topper, I mean, it's it throws a lot of heat in here. And, I mean, this is basically the temperature of my garage right now. And that's only been going for a couple of minutes. It was like 49 degrees when I got in here. But if I want it any warmer, if I'm doing anything with you know, clear coat on any of the woodworking I'm doing, I get this guy going. Anybody who has one of these or the one that's round, they eat up a lot of fuel. A ton of fuel. So these little guys, they throw a good amount of heat, they use less the amount of kerosene. But from what I started looking up, because I know kerosene is pretty similar to diesel, so, but there is a little bit of a difference. A lot of guys who use these, they wind up using diesel but what you have to do is there are two things you can mix with it. You have to use, <clears throat> excuse me, a conditioner so the wick doesn't kind of like harden up toward the bottom like crystallize and they call it clogging it up. Or for about five gallons, if I'm correct, you can put this in there, this alcohol. A couple of ounces in there. That'll help it from clogging up. But I'm going to run it and see how well that works. I ran my other wick on it and I forgot to add that stuff. So I'm gonna kind of show you really quick what it did. Oh, I had to put my finger in it too. This stuff stinks. Oof. Well, see, this is the top of the wick right here, okay? Even though I kind of rubbed some of it out, I know you really can't see it on camera, but right along in here, it gets really hard and crusty and it's the fluid, you know, it just sucks it up like a sock. And unfortunately, it stops it from going into the top of the wick to burn it. So, what I had to do was, I'm going to show you really quick. These are actually really easy to change. These are actually really, really simple. I bought this one off of Facebook Marketplace for like 30 bucks like two years ago. There's only these little screws. There's one there. One back here. I've already disassembled some of this so it'll come apart easier. Take those out. The top, well, you gotta pull this little bar out. Take the top right off. Set it off to the side. And this is what you have. This is where the wick is. This is the new wick. I started breaking it in a little bit, but I didn't want to get too far. I wanted to show you guys. Okay, there's these two little screws right here on the side. They're only hand tight right now. And you got another one right here on the, the left side of it. I don't want it to fall on the floor because I'm trying to do this one handed. You can't mix these up because they're one's bigger than the other one and it won't screw in there. This thing just rests on here. I still had the electrical for it for if I wanted to light it with two D-cell batteries. Now these little guys right here, you just unscrew them. They're little wing nuts. You just 
loosen them up with your hand. You slide these things off to the side. I gotta tighten these back up before I forget. But I'm not gonna pull this all apart. When you take these off, you don't have to take them completely off, just enough where you can turn them off to the side. This whole mechanism right here will slide right off. And there's like a little rubber gasket so in case you move it around too much, the fuel doesn't spill all over the place. Slide that out. This little wick right here, you have to kind of crunch it together to get it out because there's these little like teeth in there that hold onto it. So when you raise it and lower it, it's able to do it. So you have to line it up. Mine, I had to put it up a little bit higher because this is a new wick. So put this back on there. It's fairly easy. You just line up the holes. Not hard to do. Now put this back together really quick. These you only have to hand tighten them. Pretty simple to do. But the other thing I heard also is using the diesel. Of course you got to mix the, the additive in it. The conditioner. I guess it burns a little longer. So, I mean, I can't remember what the ratio was. I looked it up on YouTube earlier. Okay. Got those two down. Then you just slide the top back over it. It'll pretty much line up itself. Well, before you get all crazy like that, you know, you can see the holes right here. One there, another one right there. Put them in and don't tighten them down all the way because you're going to want to move this thing around a little bit. That you'll kind of put in last. Line up your holes. Because you're going to want to wiggle this thing around because it doesn't always. Hold on, guys. I'm going to move it around a little here. There we go. So these are being tightened up. I usually did them with a screwdriver, but you can do it really quick with your hands. This one, you gotta make sure they go in place. Well, what I would do is I wouldn't see how that one sinks in there a little bit. That's what you want. You don't want it sticking out. So that means I gotta move this one around a little bit. Let me set you guys down here for a second. Dropped you guys. All right. There we go. That's what I mean by you don't tighten them down all the way. Because that has to go all the way in there like so. That one's good. Tighten it in there. This little thing. Yeah, this she need in here. Slide in there like so. That's what basically locks it. So it exposes the wick. And then you got it all back together. But when you do a new wick, when you put the fuel in there, let it sit for about 10 minutes. You know, you think that as soon as you put it in there, it would automatically light and it's gonna suck it up really quick. Not always. So, all you got to do now is put it somewhere safe, keep it away from all flammable objects and good things like that. So changing the wicks in these is very easy and you can use diesel fuel in them, but you have to figure out the ratio for the conditioner for how many, I think it's three ounces for five gallons, but don't take my word for it. I mean, that's what I've been gathering on the internet. I mean, this is kind of my first time trying it. 
So I'm going to see how well it works out. Like I said, I did it on the other wick and I didn't put the conditioner in there and that was my own fault. So it is what it is. But yes, you can use diesel in these. Use the conditioner. They sell it at Walmart. It's like $9.99 for a pint of it. It's cheaper than buying kerosene because kerosene out here, to buy it, it's about $5.98 a gallon, which is ridiculous. And if I want to drive out and get it, you know, worth about $5 a gallon, it's like 25 minutes from here. My truck gets 15 miles a gallon. I'm not driving all the way out there and all the way back. It's just not worth it. So the diesel, I can get it local. It's only two blocks from my house. It's a whole heck of a lot cheaper. They say it still runs nice and clean because the new diesel fuel versus the old stuff runs a lot cleaner. So you don't get a lot of smell out of it either. So, but I'm going to wrap this video up here. Hopefully this guy's helped out you car guys and you girls that are car girls that are using heaters in your garage. You want something safe, cheap and reliable. You can pick these things up relatively cheap as long as they're in good shape. If they're all rusted out, don't touch them because they're junk. And if it leaks, it's going to be a fire hazard. So, but thanks again for watching my channel, following me and subscribing. And if you know anybody, hey, bring them onto my channel. More people, the merrier. I'd love to extend my YouTube family. So in the meantime, everybody stay safe and I'll see you guys on the next one.